Two good meditations. Thank you very much. It's been a great song service and all that has gone with it. Thank you. Junior high, senior high. I'd like to tell you, go with Megan. She's not here today, so you can go with Dave Wells. Dave, uh, and for all the junior high, senior high, good luck. All right, so. Uh, sorry, Dave, I'm only sending two with you, it looks like. keep working at it. There we go. She finally come through. I'd hate to be the last one out with me up here. <laughs> Today we're going to continue with the series Waiting on God. Thank you for the great feedback I've been receiving about the series. Tonight, Today I want to talk to you about walking through the light. Or walking to the light. You know that brings thought of near-death experiences, doesn't it? Or the things that we've heard about dying. The light felt so wonderful, someone had written. There was a boundary between the light and the dark, and I was stuck there. That there was no pain as I moved toward the light. There was three different levels of light, and I was being drawn to them. Now, this, if I was one of these people, this is the one that concerned me. I headed toward the light, and they sent me back. I was blocked by a big golden beam. Well, that might have been a blessing. Now, I know whenever I had my knee surgery a few years ago, I thought I was between life and death. <laughs> anyway, when I had that knee surgery, I can remember they rolled me in, and I do remember that. They rolled me into the operating room. I was so scared I couldn't go to sleep. I was thinking, what am I doing? So they're putting me on the table and I said, I've changed my mind, let me out of here. And this great big guy got a hold of me and held me down and prayed in my ear. And he had a beard. Not way, I'm not finished. So the next morning, the doctor come in, I said, I'd like to see the great big guy with the beard that prayed for me before I went in. He said, there was no great big guy with a beard. I said, oh yeah, there was, he prayed with me. They said, no, there wasn't. I said, look, if I'd imagined this being an angel, it'd been a blonde. It wouldn't have been a guy with a beard. So, so all I can tell you, those are the stories. And now that we've got that going toward the light out of the way, that's not what I'm talking about today. Well, all of those things are fun and they're not so bad to listen to you can arrive at your own conclusion. Today I want to talk to you about going through the light of Jesus. The light that only Jesus brings into our world. The light that he wants to shine upon your life. 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 through 7 will say this. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. That's the light I want to talk to you about today. That light, you can either walk in darkness or you can walk in the light. And today we're going to take a look at the two. We're going to see where we're at with it and apply it to waiting on God. Let's talk about the dark side, the dark side. All right, on the dark side, if uh, I need the dark side. There, there we go, no, before that. Okay, there's what I'm looking for. The dark side, on the dark side, and uh, I may have jumped ahead there, so if I did, I apologize. But on the dark side, you're going to find that Matthew chapter six, verse 33, don't go back to that, will say, how great is your darkness? How great is your darkness? The dark side, we were all made aware of that through the movies, and all of a sudden the dark side become kind of a, a catchphrase. And it was about a guy, Darth Vader, 
who has gone from good to evil and we'll find out 13 shows later he comes back to good. So there's a, the dark side. And we all understand the dark side just a little bit and we all have our dark side just a little bit. We're aware of that. How great is your darkness? Today I want to ask you to start dealing with that in your mind. See, I've been talking to you about waiting on God and finding some answers. And last week we talked about your ministry. But before I can get you to the place where you're going to do your ministry, you've got to deal with the dark side. Life didn't start getting dark immediately. Now all of you bear with me because I'm talking about you. Life didn't start getting dark immediately. Remember when you was a kid? How many times have we said, well, we were poor and we didn't even know it, right? You've heard those statements. Why? Because there was kind of a secure, safe place there that we called home. And we didn't realize that, wait, it's not always the best place, not always easy, because we felt secure. We felt very good about where we were. But then somewhere along the way, as we are moving from that security of home into our own life, there becomes a dark side. Somewhere along the line, our life, we went into a dark valley. And most of us have done that. Most of us have been there. I don't know what it was that caused that dark valley, but as we look around, as you would look around, and as we look around at our society, we're gonna see some things that might have. Maybe it was drugs. Maybe you are using, or maybe you have been a user of drugs. Maybe it's alcohol. Alcohol has dominated our society. Not just heavy drugs, but alcohol. What about maybe you went through a nasty divorce? And all of a sudden you're in a dark place. Or maybe you're just in an unhappy marriage. Maybe you're just in an unhappy marriage. Perhaps your kids have become a nightmare. My kids are here today. Oh, perhaps your kids have become a nightmare. Perhaps they're a, a heavy load. Perhaps you're in financial issues. And you're working hard, you're doing your best, and all of a sudden it's just not stretching far enough. Somewhere along the line, you entered that valley onto the dark side. And your mind has become so heavy with these issues. You have become so burdened down, you've lost two inches of height. You've become so burdened down with these issues that now we're wondering, where's the light? And the darkness seems to be overwhelming. You've convinced yourself because of that dark side that God can't and won't use you because of. Maybe it was because of a bad decision you made. Maybe it's because of a particular failing that you had. Maybe it's because of some type of abuse that you've had or experienced. And you've become convinced that God's not going to use you. And now your darkness just got a little darker. Because you're wanting to find a way out. You're wanting not to be that person anymore. You're wanting help. And we're wondering, where is that help? And all of those dark issues, you start looking at them, and you can look at them as a whole, and it's a monster wanting to overwhelm you. Or you can look at it as individual items that you've accumulated in this valley. And as you look at them individually, you still realize they're bigger than I am. What am I going to do? How am I going to handle it? Well, folks, they're bigger than you, but they're not bigger than our God. They're bigger than you, but they're not bigger than our God. The Father is with us even in our dark times. And God wants to lead you out of that darkness because he has something for you to do. Even in our dark times, God doesn't leave us. He's with us. So whenever you are thinking that the, the world has ended because my financial situation has crashed or my marriage has crashed or my family has crashed and you're thinking, oh, that gentle touch that you feel is God. It says he is not far from us. 
That time when you are feeling so overwhelmed. It is God. So now, there's some things the Scripture tells us that we're going to look at. I don't have these in your outline. You can write them down if you like. Matthew 1.23 says, Emmanuel, God with us. God sent Jesus to be with us. Matthew 28, 20, he, Jesus would say to his apostles, I am with you always. I'm with you always. So now you're thinking about that one dark moment and he was with you. John chapter 14, verse 18, he says, I will never leave you as orphans. Now whenever you think about an orphan, it is someone who has been abandoned, has been left without any hope unless someone else steps up and God said, I will not leave you as orphans. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, he said, I will never desert you or forsake you. I'm your leader. I'm not going to run away, he said. I will never desert you. Now each of you have a dark spot that you've either come through that dark valley or you're still in it. We all have them. We've all experienced what I'm telling you. There is no one here immune from it. Now I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to realize there's a sliver of light. Just a sliver of light. I want you to move towards the light. I want you to realize that that darkness can get behind you. Now there's not much light, but there's a sliver of light. And why is there a sliver of light for you today? Because you are here. You are searching. You are looking. You're wanting to know God. So there's a sliver of light in your life. So if you start moving toward that light, the darkness, the light will get bigger. And the darkness will be more behind you. But we all have it, folks. We sit here and we may be embarrassed by it. We may be ashamed of it. We may have things that have just overwhelmed us. We've all got them. If you look around and there, there is no one in this audience immune, we've all got them. That moment that we wish, what do I think? That problem that we've experienced, we've all got them. Now, let me tell you, point two. There are no shades of gray. Now I know that there was a bestseller. I know that there was a movie by this title. Didn't read it, didn't see it, don't want to, heard more than I wanted. <laughs> the things I heard just weren't that good. There is no shade of gray. Everyone take note of that. Luke chapter 23, or chapter 11 verse 23 would say, Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. He said, you're either with me or you're against me. There's no neutral ground. No neutral ground. Luke chapter 16 verse 23 would say this. No one can serve two masters. Either you hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve two masters, he said. Many people try to live in between that dark and light. Remember that one I told you early on where it said, I was in this boundary between light and dark. There is no boundary between light and dark. You're either in darkness or you're in light. Jesus said it plainly. You're with me or you're against me. So in your journey now out of your darkness, and I hope that you're on that journey out of your darkness. There's no gray area. There's no gray area. You're working towards the light. And there is no gray area that you're working toward. Keep moving. Whenever you get to where you don't think it's quite as dark as it used to be, you are being deceived. Because until you get into the light, you are in the darkness. Until you get into the light of Jesus, you're in the darkness of Satan. And he wants to convince you that you've moved far enough. You're doing okay. Keep moving. You cannot live in both. 
You can't be in both areas. So the shade of gray that some thinks there, where I can have my foot in the world and a foot in the church, and the only thing I can say is, you're going to lose your balance. You can't do it. And you're going to fall, and it's going to be in the wrong direction, because you can't do it. So first of all, you've got to move out of the darkness. We've got it. Secondly, don't stop too early. And the third point, boy, this sermon's going fast. You're going to be at the restaurant early. Hey. <laughs> third point is the light. Let me ask you this question. This is what we've been leading to. How would you like to have a whole new outlook on life? A whole new outlook. Where you're not always looking over your shoulder. Folks, don't be deceived when God forgives sin, He forgives it. He said He will remember it no more. He's not going to bring it up again and say, Oh, I remember when you... He's not going to do that to you. It's not going to happen. I want you to know that it's possible to have that whole new outlook on life. That you can feel like you're a kid again where you have that security all around you. Oh, you may still have some financial issues and you may still have some family issues, but now you're going to have a tool to deal with it. And God is complete in His forgiveness. He's not going to look later and whenever you stumble just a little bit, He's going to say, Ah, I told you. No, that's mom. That's not God. <laughs> that's how that works. God's not going to do that. Because God forgives us completely. Completely. So, to do so, you have to move out of the darkness that we've talked about. You have to move from the gray area. That's a darkness. You got to move from there. You only think it's light. You got to move your life where John 8, 12 will say, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, will have the light of life. That's where you got to move to. You got to move to this place where Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That you never have to walk in that darkness. One of my favorite verses, and I didn't put it in there for you, but I, I want you to write it in, is uh, Psalms 18 and verse 28. You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. My God turns my darkness into light. Those things that have just darkened my life, that have caused me to stumble, that have caused me to fall, that have caused me to relive them over and over. Has anyone else got teenage memories like that? And over and over and over, God said, you're my light. I'm your light. And I'll lead you. I'll lead you past this. He's going to turn that darkness of those days into a light that shines brilliantly. That's what he's wanting to do for us today. The light from Jesus, the Son of God. It brightens my life, folks. It exposes my fears, not to you, but to me. And it allows me to be set free from these fears. The light, whenever I'm walking in the light of Jesus, it's just like today. I've been so blessed to be here. I've been so blessed with our song service. I've been blessed with the devotion of the, the guys. I've been blessed with the, the choir. All of a sudden, what seemed so dark yesterday for me, God has lifted that light, that, that darkness, and given me a light. What seemed so dark two or three days ago seems to be gone. Because God has filled my life with light. We can all be brand new. We can have a whole new outlook on life. I look forward to getting here. I look forward to our Sundays. I look forward to the Wednesday night group. I look forward to those things. Because it renews me and fills me with that light of God. I hear darkness all day, don't you? 
there's somebody who's having a tough time. But isn't it great when God will whisper in your ear, and it may be from one of you. I had a person today, one of you, come to me and said, my God has been working in my life like I've not seen him work before. One of you said that. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. That God is working in your life like you've not felt or seen him do before. Or you may be saying, my prayer life has found all new meaning. Or all of a sudden I've opened my eyes and I've seen what God is doing. Where before I couldn't see it. And now I can. That's the light of God. There's a sliver of light, folks. And each of you are being exposed to it. Every time you hear a sermon, every time you hear a song, how can you hear amazing grace without seeing a sliver of light? That maybe that grace that he's speaking of is for my life. Maybe it's about me. Maybe it's about my forgiveness. Maybe it's about my eternity. Maybe it's about my relationship with him. Maybe he's not going to hold those things against me. Maybe, maybe I can be free. Free. As only God can make me free. Maybe I can be free. The darkness in your life, folks, is real. Everyone hear me. The issues that you have, I don't know which one they, I do know which one they are for most of you, but <clears throat> I'm not going to tell anyone. I know what most of you have dealt with, what you're dealing with, what you have dealt with in your past. But I will tell you this, your darkness, please hear me, is real. If you have not dealt with it, if you have not brought Jesus into your life, your darkness is real. It's a very, very heavy burden. Your darkness is real. But by waiting on God and allowing God to work in our life, that sliver of light's going to be there. Conclusion. Be prepared for your walk. This is another one of my favorite passages. Uh-oh, I skipped 2 Corinthians. We'll just move on. Go on to Psalms 119. 2 Corinthians, you should write in light and heart. That was on me. Be prepared for your walk. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. His word, a lamp for my feet. Now, let's take a hard look at this verse. If I am going through a path, a light shining up here where I can see what's going on, that would be the second one, a light for my path. I'm not a tall guy, but I'm tall enough that I could run into a branch, low hanging, hit me in the head, might break the branch. Don't want to do that. I could be walking through there so there's a light for my path. I can see down my path, but a light for my feet. I can stumble real easy. I wear <coughs> big shoes <coughs> and I can stumble real easy. It's not always easy. My basketball coach in junior high told me I could trip over a painted line. <laughs> and I want you to know he was right. I could. A light for my path. All right? And a lamp for my feet. Now, I don't know what it's like at your house, but if your house can be real dark. How many of you have ever kicked the dresser on your way by? My point exactly. Did that dresser move? I doubt it. It was you. How many have found that as you're walking through the hallway, somebody has intentionally left something out for you to fall? Maybe they didn't do it intentionally, but they've left something for you to fall over and you didn't see it because you were saving electricity. You didn't want to wake up somebody. You didn't turn on the light. I got a call late one night from one of our deacons who had had some issues. And I'd forgot the phone was downstairs. The phone went off, I heard it, I fell down a flight of stairs. I could have turned on a light. Instead, I hit my head. 
Now, so you get the idea. You need a light, a light for your feet. So you want a lamp there so that you can shuffle along. And that's what God's Word to do for you. But now you want Him to light up your whole path. I don't want to run in some other obstacle. I don't want one of those doors that has been opened on the bottom and not on the top. We don't want one of them. That's what God wants to do for you. He wants to give you all the light you need from head to toe. He wants to take care of you entirely. And folks, for many of you, right now it's just a sliver. Some of you are going to wrestle what I've said today. Some of you are going to wonder if it could be true. I'm telling you, I'm a living example that it's true. I'm a living example that it's true. Every one of us have got darkness. But God will light a path. He'll put a lamp at my feet. And I can see. Thank you very much for being here. I want to encourage you before I have the final word here. Come back tonight. Come back tonight. You'll be thrilled with the message. The band's going to play again. You're going to be excited about it. I want our parking lot full. I want to be a witness to our community. I want everyone in Latonia to know that we have gathered to say, thank you, God. Thank you. Why? Because he's that sliver of light that we want everyone to see. Can you surrender to him today? Can you get past your darkness? Can you at least start making progress where you're moving towards the light? Can you do that? Will you please stand as we have our invitation?